I would like you to watch this movie before watching this one. Or you should know something about how to initialize class constant data members using the member initialization list. Before we do this work, we want to talk about default function arguments. You may recall that in C++, the functions can take default parameters, which simplify the function call. This topic is discussed in Chapter 8 of the ebook Software Engineering with Basic C++. And you probably remember that you could make the following calls to ignore function because ignore takes two default arguments. If I make a call like this, it ignores just one character because the first default argument is one. If I make call like this, where argument is five, it ignores five characters or all the characters till the end of the file, whichever one comes first, because second default argument is EOF character. And if I make function call like this one, it'll ignore either five characters or up to character B, including that character, whichever comes first, okay? These three calls become possible because there are default arguments for two parameters. First one that takes an integer, second one takes a character. Okay, so what are the default constructor arguments? Just like default arguments can be provided to standalone functions, same way we can provide default arguments to constructors and member functions. Now the simple rule for providing default arguments is that whichever argument gets the default value, all the arguments to its right must also be provided with the default value. Okay? And usually it makes sense to provide default value such that it is used most often by the user of the class. Okay, let's revisit the student class example we did in the previous video. We had a constant data member called ID and the overall class and constructor looks like below. Student, we had uh, four data members. For the sake of convenience, I wrote them in the same line. And then in the default constructor, I use the initialization list for ID because ID is a constant and I provided some value for it and the other three class members I initialize the usual way. Okay, and there was a print function and there was a code for this which we'll see very soon. <clears throat> now here we use the initialization list colon, id, and a value just for the constant. But nicely enough, C++ allows the initialization list utility to also be used for non-constant and non-static class data members. And this is very useful. So what we can do is by combining the initialization list and default constructor arguments, we can provide a single constructor that will do the following task. It will act as a default constructor. It will also act as an explicit constructor. And it will also initialize non-static constant uh, data members that would need the initialization list because non-static constant members cannot be initialized without the initialization list. So now let us do this in Visual Studio for this student class example. 
Okay. <clears throat> this is my student class example. So I'm going to rewrite this constructor here because we want to extend its functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically um, <clears throat> write the all the arguments that an, that an explicit constructor should take. So I'll say the string ID and here I want to provide it a default value of and let me allow, allow me to remove this here because I'm going to do it again. And let's say default value provided is something that, that's an unrealistic value, so we can actually set it to a proper value later on. So let's say some 0, 0 value, so 0, 0, 0, something like that. Then the second string, which is the first name, so I just call it first, and its default value is, let's say, not set. The third argument would be for the last name, I just call it last, its default value is also not set. And my last constructor argument is GPA, which is double type. I just call it GP, and its default value is 0, 0.0. Okay. And I don't need these anymore because I'm going to use the initialization list to set them uh, to proper values. So notice my constructor got. Uh, actually, I should change it to something different than that because ID is the name field. So let's just change to lowercase ID and now it will be fine. In order to provide initialization list, as I mentioned earlier, we use the colon and the class member name, which is ID, and whatever got passed as an argument to the constructor here. So that will be ID. If we ha want initialization list to be used for more than one class members, we just separate them by comma. So I want the initialization list for the first name. So I just put the comma and say first name. And inside, I put the argument first. <clears throat> Same way, I want the initialization list for the last name. So I copy it and I paste it. And my argument here is last. So I write the word last, and I can go to the next line to the GPA. So here I'm, my argument is GPA, and here I can give a default value of 0. No, sorry. Here I will take this value, GP, and my job is done. When I do that, I need no code inside the constructor body, so I can kind of just bring it here and leave it blank. Okay. This is it. What I did here is I provided the default values for all the arguments. This is for ID. This is for the first name. This is for the last name. This is for the GPA. And also use the initialization list in case user does not provide uh, user provides explicit values for all four class members. Then ID will be explicit value for the ID field. 
first will be explicit value for the first name field last will be explicit value for the last name field and GP will be explicit value for the GPA field the amazing thing about this constructor that I wrote it has many properties first thing it acts like not one constructor but it acts like four different constructors okay so for example I can make this constructor call here and that would compile and it will print <coughs> the object s1 with all the default values let's run it and you can see that here first name not set sec last name not set ID is 000, zero, zero. GPA is 0 it should be 0, 0 but again since we didn't use show point it shows up as a whole number 0 so this is fine next let me actually <coughs> write the next constructor call means I'm gonna kind of comment out this one and this time I provide uh, just the ID and leave the other three as default so I'm just gonna provide ID of one two three four five <clears throat> and it's gonna take default value for the first name last name and the GPA let's compile and run this one and as you can see in this case also it took the default value for the first and last name but it took the explicit value for the ID and the default value for the GPA Okay. Now I'm going to make a second constructor call, which will take two arguments this time, and just comment out this one. This time I'm going to provide the first name, let's say Don and take the de default value for the last name and the GPA so this is my third constructor call Four. actually I was wrong earlier we'll have five constructors just this will act like five different constructors so this is my third and I have two more to go so let's comp compile this one and run it and you can see now that <coughs> the first name got set to Don for the last name I have the default parameter not set ID got set to 1 2 3 4 5 and for GPA I have the default value 0 which shows up as 0, 0.0 that shows up as 0 okay let's try the third constructor call where I provide ID first name and last name but take the default value for GPA no actually that will be the fourth constructor call okay All right, four. So Don Manning <coughs> compile and run this one. And nicely enough.
talk, took default value for ID, sorry, explicit value for ID, explicit value for the first name, explicit value for the last name, and the default value for GPA. And lastly, I make my last one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, the fifth constructor call. And this time I give it explicit value for the GPA also, let's say 3.9. Okay. So just compile and run it. And let's take a look at this one. As you can see, it took the explicit value for the ID, explicit value for the first name, explicit value for the last name, and explicit value for the GPA. So now, this time, no default parameters were used because all the parameters were provided explicitly. So this is a great use of combining the default constructor parameters and the initialization list, not only your code for constructor becomes so small, in this case, one constructor acts like five different constructors. And the advantage does not, does not disappear just there. This constructor is much faster in its execution compared to if you provided the code inside the body, inside the curly braces. So providing an initialization list not only, and the default parameter, not only allows you to use the same constructor as multiple constructor, but also it makes your code much faster. So I would highly recommend from now on that you use the member initialization list and the default parameters to accomplish two things. One is to make your construction execution faster, so make your code faster, and second, reduce the number of constructors that you have to write because then one constructor could do the job of multiple constructors. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.